Time to Shine Today Podcast Varsity Squad. It is Scott Ferguson, and I am flying blind when it comes to my next guest, the amazing Amanda Elise Love. She is going to bring us to the awareness of fibromyalgia, um, something that I don't know too much, if at all, about. So I'm so ready for this interview, and I'm telling you, you are too. I mean, because there's from just a little incy bincy uh, piece of research that I did, it can be some hidden, hidden things that can be misdiagnosed and stuff like that. We're going to get into that with my good friend Amanda. She is 30 years old and she's a registered holistic nutritionist. She did a lot of traveling when she was a kid. And when she means by traveling, she made a lot of trips to the doctors trying to figure out what was going on in her life. Finally, like me, I go to a chiropractor. I'm always talking about chiropractic care and how it helps me level up daily. She found a chiropractor that helped her understand what was going on. She started to feel immensely better after integrating, you know, the natural nutrition. And from that, she turned it into getting her diploma and became a registered holistic nutritionist. So I am, again, I am so stoked because I'm flying blind about fibromyalgia. I'm sure a lot of other people are out there too. They just think it's this big, cool sounding word. But Amanda's going to bring us the light to that. So, Amanda, welcome to the Time to Shine Today podcast, Varsity Squad. I want you to introduce yourself to us. But first, what is your favorite color and why? My favorite color is red. Okay. And I just, I just love the color. Yeah? Are you fiery like I... red? No. <laughs> well, it's in your color wheel. It looks, it would look great it, on you. It looks good on me. So I, that's probably <laughs> why. I love it. I love it. So, Amanda, let's get to the origins a little bit. I, I tried to a little bit, but there's such a path that you traveled, and I really, really want to get into that and the, the pain that you felt, and then finally kind of getting yeah. to the point of having some relief. Because, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, there's really no cure, quote unquote. No, I'm doing that no. in air quotes if you're listening to no. fibromyalgia, correct? No, and I can't. And when I work with people, I never say I can cure you or Good. I can't okay. diagnose you. That's out of my scope of okay. what I do. Right. But you can't get better through nutrition and supplements and lifestyle changes, I believe. Love it. I love it. So, so let's get to that origin story, please. Yeah. So my origin story actually started, I was born six weeks early. So, and I was constantly sick every four to six weeks. I was constantly had sinus infections. I was put on the antibiotics. My blood work would come back normal like so many people in life mm -hmm. with any health condition. It doesn't have to be fibromyalgia. And I completed high school and I went into personal training and that was six months, 500 hours. And then right after that, I turned 20 and I got all of a sudden, I couldn't get off the couch. I was in so much pain. I was so fatigued. I had so many headaches. And I would go to the gym and I started to come home and I was just start crashing and taking these two hour naps. And I was like, okay, what, what should I do? And eventually 10 months later, I found a room, I went to the rheumatology and they said, oh, you have fibromyalgia. And I was only 20 years old. I mean, is rheumatology like the arthritis doctor? Yeah. Okay. Got it. The arthritis doctor. But, um, but what so, made you go to a rheumatologist? Like what was, it was just like, oh crap, I got to check the boxes and just to see where. It's yeah, going. I think, I think it was checking the boxes. I had a grandma who was a nurse. So she, she probably was the one who came up with that idea. Do they and, think it has anything to do about you being born earlier prematurely? Uh, honestly, I don't know. Okay. They say it could be. They don't, they don't really know. They say a lot of times if you look up online, they'll say, oh, it could be a trauma. Maybe you had a childhood trauma. Maybe you were in a car accident. Wow. Wow. So, so even like a PTSD can kind of lead to fibromyalgia in a sense. Well, it, yeah. That's what they're saying. That's the problem is we don't have enough research. Wow. Right. Wow. And okay. in the U S they're actually cutting the research for fibromyalgia. Okay. So, wow. That's, that's crazy. So, okay. So let's kind of get into some of the symptoms of the people might experience with fibromyalgia. Yeah. If you could drop some of those in. 
Uh, so I always say the big three are extreme fatigue. Like you can't get off the couch. It's constant. I always tell people it's not just like a little fatigue that comes around and stuff. It's always, always, always going. I always say extreme pain. So this is pain down your neck, your shoulders, your arms, your legs. This is not like pain in one area. Gotcha. Like, so it radiates tongue. everywhere. It radiates everywhere. Okay. It's not like something like you stubbed your toe or you sprained your ankle. It's pain that's constant and it's excruciating. It's Got so it. excruciating that you can't even take a shower. Got or if it. you take a shower, it exhausts you. Wow. And That's so, cool. and then I always say sleep is a huge thing. Either people can't fall asleep, they can't stay asleep, or I always say you feel like a truck has hit you because you're not getting that deep restful REM sleep that you need. Those are usually the top three things. And then there's, of course, other, ish, other things too with it. Gotcha. So... Is the fibro fog real? Again, I Google this. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, tell me right. a little bit about that. I'm thinking that like people just kind of sit there and they're, they're almost like paralyzed because of the pain they're going through, no sleep. So the yeah. neurological is not going on fire. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say that would be number four would be brain okay. fog. You can't, okay. I rem- remember I can't, I couldn't really focus and stuff here. You just never quite able to do like anything okay mentally right right so that's a big thing too so then that depresses you yeah i I was just gonna say i mean that depression has got to be a key factor in this because yeah you know you you were a personal trainer and you were living an active lifestyle you were intaking what needed to intake to level you up and still you were going through the the pain the fatigue and the insomnia if you will so what was your first step after you're diagnosed? Yeah. I kind of so, move forward. Yeah. So my, honestly, my first step was exactly what everybody does is listen to the doctor. Right. And right. you go and it's, it's sad, but that's how our life is. Sure. Right. And so the only thing they said was, Either you go on the medication, so I would, Cebalta or Lyrica are the two medications that are usually, people are put on, and they are depressant medications, and I only stayed on it for, like, two days, because I was like, I'm not, I'm not staying on this the rest of my life. It made me nauseous, lightheaded, and I was like, I'm not doing this. You're like a zombie, right? You weren't motivated. No. You, you might alleviate some of the symptoms, right? But you're like, what's the quality of no. life of that, right? Yeah, and it didn't, it didn't do anything for the pain. It didn't do oh, wow. anything for the fatigue. And a lot of people with fibromyalgia tell me it doesn't help them with those things. Okay. But they still stay on them. That's the problem. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right? Wow. Stay on medications, even though we don't know if they're really helping us or not. Exactly. Right. It, it, and I do see them. I like to watch my sports on the weekend. I see a lot of the drugs. I've heard a couple of those drugs in like of during the commercials and yeah. stuff like that. And in like some of the side effects are diarrhea, heartburn, death. You know, it's like, really? I mean, so that's why I wanted to kind of transition this into a more holistic conversation. Yeah. And what you do and what you would, you did yourself and then what you would encourage other people to do if they were diagnosed with, with the fibromyalgia. Yeah. So honestly, I did the physical, I did the physical therapy. They do say you should do it for like a couple months. I mean, I did the weight training, I did the swimming and I was coming out crying and I was like, this is so silly. I had just completed mm-hmm. A personal training program 10 months before and you it's it's like okay what's next right. and then they only the only thing that was suggest I mean was right next to the physical therapy was a pain management thing right so I did do the pain management 
And what they did is shoot a huge needle into all, into your back, like so 13 trigger points. So that's how they diagnose you with fibromyalgia. Okay. Is they touch your neck, your back. And if you're like screeching in pain or they'll, they'll probably say you have it. Okay. So it's really a st- not the greatest test, but. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I'm not laughing at you. I'm like just thinking because, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, just what. I'm not a big I mean, fan of pain. I mean, it's sort of like, and so I, I mean, when I did the pain management, the my blood sugar was crashing. I'd have to have juice. I would have to have the cookies to bring it back up, right? And so... <laughs> So for me personally, I was like, I'm not doing three treatments right? with the pain management. Wow. Because I was crying because it was so painful. It was the most excruciating thing I've ever done. And so the following year, like a couple months later, I, that's when I found the wellness chiropractor because my grandma found a little newspaper clip thing said wellness talk by a wellness chiropractor and she went to the talk and he said well if your granddaughter has been diagnosed at with fibromyalgia at the age of 20 she's been very sick a very long time long time right and a light bulb went off in my grandma's head and she thought oh he really gets it and so i mean that's that's the story a big thing yeah like chiropractic does it help alleviate with some of the fibromyalgia and how often do you see your chiropractor um i only saw i actually did the chiropractic for i only worked with him for like eight months okay so i didn't stick with it okay but i mean he did the elimination diet thing he tested me for all the food sensitivities Found out I had two genes predisposed me to that gluten sensitivity Okay. by both parents, the highest in his practice at the time. And this has actually been, this will hit 10 years this year. Okay. And found out I had soy sensitivity, egg sensitivity, dairy sensitivity. Wow. So all those foods were affecting how I was how my health was okay right and so i stick so i did elimination diet which means cutting out all those foods cutting out all the nightshades cutting out and just going back to the basics fruits vegetables grains gluten-free and i mean stuff that was available to the i know man, right like i mean i feel like we all should get back to like eating that yeah. way yeah. And, and I think I even saw on your social that 80% yeah. of the food that's out there was not even available to our cavemen. So kind of yeah. stay natural and what that you could walk along and graze on out in the wilderness in a sense, right? The, the yeah. little help with, with it. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, I always, you always should stay away from like the gluten. <laughs> There's so much like gluten-free products but they're like, really, they're not the greatest. Right. It's the, fe- it's the end thing to do. And I, someone told me the other day, they said, well, I was off gluten for six weeks. You might have to be off gluten for longer. Sure. To see, because I always tell people one little molecule of gluten can stay in your body for up to weeks, up to months. Yeah. So if you're going to go gluten free, which people don't want to do, you have to do it. Right. Strictly. Right. Exactly. Can't. Yeah, you, you have, have to stay strict and committed to it, correct? You have to stay committed. And right. I always say gluten free might be one of the answers, mm-hmm. but you might have to get off of all those other foods first. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right. Just like a like you said, elimination diet process of elimination. And if you yeah. add something in and you're starting to feel the effects, okay. I gotcha. Yeah. I gotcha. So what foods have you found outside of gluten that you people with the fiber, fibromyalgia should really stay away from? Um, dairy okay. is a big one. I feel like 
if you have a lot of immune issues, you really should stop with the dairy and stuff. I think, and there's substitutes out there nowadays. There's so mm-hmm. much, I mean, it's crazy how much it's changed. It's just in the last year, 10 years since I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Right. Like how much products that there are out there that you can substitute for things. Gotcha. gotcha. Right. I mean, dairy, there's dairy free milks. There's, I mean, the dairy free cheese is not that great, honestly. Right. Right. But, but I mean, you eventually your body starts getting used to these foods. Right. Right. So then you don't miss the stuff. And I mean, we're not built for that food anyways, the process. No, food. We're, I mean, no, we're not built for ancestry, it. ancestry, right? No, but if you're going to have whatever you want to have, there are options. Yeah. If you want you, those options. So you don't feel like it, it it's taken over your life in a sense of, so you know, no. so you have some freedom, you have options. That's fantastic. Yeah. So let's move forward into you. You're helping people now. Yeah. Um, with it. And like, how do you get your clients? So maybe the listeners out there can refer people to you. Like what is like, if, you know, if I'm at a networking event or, or talking virtually, like what am I listening for that would make them a great introduction possible client for Amanda? Um, so if they've been diagnosed with fibromyalgia, that would be a yeah, great uh, start. Sure. Right. Um, I think if people are complaining of fatigue, pain and sleep, and it's continuous for at least three months and they're not getting any relief. Right. Right. I think a lot of people don't get diagnosed with fibromyalgia until they're like 50, 60. Right. Right. So they live with it a lot of their life too. Right. Yeah. They live with it for, and a lot of them tell me, well, I think I had it in my 20s and 30s, <laughs> right? But they're not getting diagnosed. So you could always just send them over to my website sure, and, and or my podcast and they could look at me and see, learn a little bit about what I do. That's at amandaelislove.com, correct? Yeah. Okay. Excellent. So Amanda, we're going to kind of transition a little bit about you as well right now. Because I know yeah. our listeners want to know it, so they'll know you a little bit as we yeah. move forward. So, you are you familiar with the movie Back to the Future? Mm, with Michael J. Of. Fox? Okay. Dude goes back in time, bit. right? So, I want, you to, I want you to get in that DeLorean with us, and let, let's go back in to the 20-year-old Amanda. What kind of knowledge nuggets? We call them the knowledge nuggets here, Okay. What kind of knowledge nuggets are you dropping on her to maybe shorten her learning curve, level up, and blast through life? Um, I would say go the natural route. I love that answer. That is, I love that answer because that's something that if I went back, you know, I'm almost yeah. 50, you know, I take right. care of myself. But, yeah. you know, if I went back, I would be, my diet would be a hell of a lot different than it is right now. I would stay yeah. a lot natural. Like right now, I live in South Florida, so we have access to all the, the fresh seafood. You know, we have right. access to everything here because stuff never really dies. So thank you for answering <laughs> it like that. So how do you want your dash remembered then? That little line between your incarnation date and your expiration date, the life date and death date. How do you want Amanda's dash remembered? Um, that I never gave up. Okay. In life. And I kept going. And that serving people with fibromyalgia is my biggest in my life. That is, I was, I was going to add that for you. If you didn't say it, honey, I was going to be like, yeah, Yeah. you never gave up. You kept going, but I helped as many people along the way. Yeah. You know, that's that's what, honestly, that's what keeps me going. Love it. So man, who's, who's had, I'll go this route. What keeps you up at night now? Outside of fibromyalgia. Let's go mentally. What keeps you up? Um, what keeps me up at night? Nothing really. No, that's good. I, I mean, I think that I 
you're always looking to serve. Um, that's what I'm, yeah. hearing. I'm looking at your social. You're always putting out fantastic content and squad. All of that information will be in the show notes for, for you to go find Amanda that she puts out great stuff. She's interviewed by awesome people. She interviews awesome people. It, yeah. it's awesome. So who's had the most profound impact in your life? Oh, that's easy. My grandmother. I was, I knew you were going to say it. I knew you say because she's the one that's yeah. like, something's yeah. not right here. We need to get you fixed. I love it. Yeah. She was the one who took me to all my doctor's appointments. She would, she's been my biggest supporter growing my business. She would listen to every single podcast that I was on that's and, awesome. stuff. and I'm going to hit one year next Yay. month in March. Uh, and I've almost done 50 interviews and stuff. So the thing is, she was my biggest support and I just lost her last. Oh August. my gosh. I'm so, so sorry. I know this is honestly the last six months. I mean, but I mean, I think that's, I think everybody should have at least a few people in their life that sure. support them. And that's why you're so, such a big heart. I think a lot of that grandma yeah rub yeah, off on you in, in yeah it's room. totally true how about let's go the other way like who like what's the worst advice you've ever been given the worst advice i've ever been given um i think i don't know i don't really take listen. medication <laughs> take medication probably would be the worst Do the pain management was right right i mean that's the worst advice i don't i try to not listen to the vice that has to do with the medical field anymore. Right. I know. Yeah. I'm right there with you. Unless like, oh I, I like, I, I think I told you off camera or off live that, you know, I dealt with a sinus infection for like nine days until finally Susan, my lady was like, go to the doctor. And I did. And within two days yeah. it, it's cleared up. So there is medical marvels that actually work, Yeah, but, there is. but pain medicate pain. I don't know, man. Yoga is my jam. Believe it or not, I'm 265 pounds, but I'm through three quarters primary of the Ashtanga yoga and it's changed my life. It's taken away so much of my inflammation because I play, you know, I was, you know, veteran in the military and then, you mm -hmm. know, play combat sports my whole life too. So it's helped out so, so much. So what is, let's take our computer out of it. Okay. Anything electronic, what's three things that Amanda cannot live without? Um, what can I not live without? Uh, my dogs. Yay. Uh, family and friends love it you are so community oriented that's why you're so yeah, yeah, successful with this yeah. yeah so amanda what is your definition of a life well lived so for me personally it's serving people with fibromyalgia but if it's whatever is your life mission is what you should be doing in your life so live your passion live your mission live, right? your pa live your, i want you to live your passion that's amazing whatever that is that's fantastic. I, I love, I love that. So squad, we're going to kind of move into, as we wind things down just a little bit, we're going to move into our leveling up lightning round. We're going to do that with my really good friend, Amanda, just as soon as we get back from thanking our sponsors and affiliates. And then, Hey, we are back with my friend, Amanda, least love who you must get in touch with if you're dealing with fibromyalgia and all that information will be in the show notes. But right now, we are going to move into our leveling up lightning round. And Miss Amanda, you and I could talk for an hour on each one of these, okay? Okay. Five seconds. No explanation. Okay. All of them can be answered quickly, my love, okay? Got it. And I just said my love. That's your last name. Rock on. Yep. Here we go. Ready to level up? Yep. Here we go. What's the best leveling up advice you've ever received? Don't give up. Yes. Share one of your personal habits that contributes to your success. Mm, working out. Yeah. Other than your own website, Amanda Least Love, and of course, Time to Shine Today, my shameless plug. What other website do you like to go to, Amanda, to level up? Um, Maddie Lonston. Okay. Yeah. I'll let, elaborate a little bit. I'll give you five seconds to elaborate. Um, it about? I was just on his podcast back in November. It's okay. how to get his podcast is how to not get sick and die. Love it. I have to check that out. I'm going to put that in the show notes too. Amanda, if I'm in my doldrums, just not feeling it, you notice it. 
what book are you handing me for you read this? Uh, staying healthy with nutrition. Love it. What's your most commonly used emoji when you text? The laughing emoji. Upside or sideways or upways? Upways. Upways. Got it. Got it. And if you could stay physically one age for the rest of your life, keep the wisdom you have now and continue to garner wisdom, what age would that be? Physically. Physically? Mm-hmm. Um, I guess right now, 31. I, I always say 32 and I'm coming up on 50. So I'd rewind it back. I wouldn't, go, I wouldn't go back to my twenties. Right. We all do. But like 31, 32, it's like, you kind of have stuff figured out and you still yeah. feel good. You know right. what I'm saying? It's like, you, well, I understand what you're going through, but you know, physically, I mean, I'm, like I said, I progressed through life through yoga and working out myself and a lot mm-hmm. I'm on the ocean, but that, that that's awesome. So what is your favorite charity and or organization you like to give your time or money to? Um, my, I would say anything having to do with like my church and stuff. Love it. Love it. Where do you attend? Uh, Prescott Heights. Okay. Prescott Heights. Nice. Nice. Heights. All right. Well, awesome. So last question, you can elaborate, elaborate a little bit on this one, but what is the best decade of music? 60s, 70s, 80s, or 90s? Well, I have to go with the 90s. 90, you're like, 90s baby. <laughs> I'm the 90s baby. And- I love it. I love and I was, you. And I was in eighty nine, though, weren't you? If I no, I was nineteen ninety. Oh, were you nineteen ninety? Well, I graduated high school in nineteen ninety. Yeah, awesome. And that has the. I was really into the boy bands, so okay, awesome. Like the In Sync's and the Backstreet Boys, and oh, quietly in the favorite. in the closet. I was the same way. I like my bat boy band, so I could break out some. I want it that way, you know, by Backstreet. And it's still, and it, honestly, it's still good. <laughs> It's so good. I love it. I love it. So Amanda, how can we find you on? Um, so my website's Amanda Lee's Love, and I'm either on Facebook or Instagram, and that's also Amanda Lee's Love. So I love it. And like get over to Amanda Lee's Love. She has an awesome uh, cover page here. Um, looks like you can opt right into her and she'll actually give you tips if you have fibromyalgia, if you know somebody that has fibromyalgia, direct them to Amanda Least Love. Check the show notes below and direct them there. And she looks like she has a sleep fix for those suffering from fibromyalgia. So please go there. And if you are dealing with it, with fibromyalgia, or you know somebody that you think may be dealing with it or is dealing with it, please get a hold of Time to Shine today. I will make a personal warm introduction to Miss Amanda Lees, who just carved out time and gave us a really a free masterclass. And again, something I was flying blind about fibromyalgia. You know, if you're experiencing ex- extreme fatigue, extreme pain, can't sleep, or that brain fog, may, get diagnosed, go, go f- talk to somebody that knows what they're going to be looking for. And like, Amanda had to go do a lot of traveling. I love the way that she wrote that, but she had to travel the doctor a lot. And luckily she had her grandma that really believed in her and believed that there's something wrong and took it and got it, got her diagnosed. And so she can start working. She wants to, to, even if you don't have fibromyalgia, do an elimination diet, see what you need to stay away from. She's going to recommend staying away from gluten, dairy, stuff that is not in the perimeter of our grocery stores. Stay away from the processed junk people. I'll just say shit. Take a, stay away from the processed shit. You know, go yeah. natural. You know, she's somebody that's never gived up. She keeps going and she's always serving people. And especially with the fibromyalgia, she wants to help you. Please let us put you in touch with Miss Amanda. And her mission to you guys is you know, just live your passion, do what you love every day. And like we say at time to shine today, do we do what we love in the service of people that love what we do. And that's what Amanda does. She's so humble. Yes. So hungry. She's a survivor, but also a thriver. She's always leveling up her health, wealth, and mindset. Amanda, thank you so, so much for coming on time to shine today. The knowledge that I get you dropped are priceless is going to help so many people. And we love you for that. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so much, Scott, for having me. You bet.